Hello again, this is Ike Hoffman with Tactica Real Estate Solutions, and today we're talking offset formula in Microsoft Excel. This is the second video of a two-part video series, and it's going to exclusively cover how to create dynamic charts and graphs. So when you're updating data in your financial model, those charts should update automatically. If you haven't seen part one yet, I check that out first, it's linked below. That dives deep into the, the theory behind the offset formula, goes over the syntax, and shows you three different examples of how I'm using the offset formula in my Tactica financial models. If you've been enjoying Tactica financial analysis content, I'd really appreciate if you liked the video, subscribe to our channel, and allow us to notify you when we're releasing new videos. Let's go ahead and build some dynamic charts. We're currently looking at some general renovation information on an investment opportunity we've, we've been reviewing. In this particular example, there's 88 apartment units, and we're saying that we plan to renovate all 88 units over an 11 month time frame. You can see off to the right then, the months are tracked in column E, the unit renovations each month, and then the cumulative total is tallied off in column G. After 11 months, all 88 units would be renovated. Now let's say we want to chart this data. Your first instinct may be to grab all the data through month 11 and insert a chart. I'm going to grab this dual axis clustered column, hit OK. So when we take a look at it, it shows the bars are showing us how many units are renovated each month. And then the line is tracking the cumulative total over that 11 months. So at month 11, all 88 units are renovated. While this may look sufficient at first, it's not flexible. And our assumption and our renovation assumption may change. For example, if we type in 20 months, you can see that the chart still only tracks through month 11. Although the bars did update and the cumulative did as well, it's an incomplete picture. If we put in, say, six months, now nearly half of our chart is blank. Ideally, this chart would resize to whatever assumptions we're plugging into the model. To do that, we need to make it dynamic and we, we can use the offset formula to assist us. The first step is we need to create named ranges for all the variables we wanna track. In this case, we're tracking renovated units, we're tracking the cumulative amount, and the months. So for each one of those variables, we're going to create a custom named range that will be dynamic and adjust automatically as we're changing inputs in the model. So let's go ahead and set up these named ranges. I'm going to click new and our first one is we'll do months. I'm going to click type offset. We're going to set the reference cell as the first month. The rows argument will be blank. The columns argument will be blank. And then we're going to tie the height argument month end assumption. And then our width column will also be blank. I'm going to hit enter. Now when we click into the formula bar below, this name range is tracking months one through six. We're going to follow that exact same logic for our other two variables. I'll name this range as renovated. Offset. Reference cell is units renovated. No row argument, no column argument. Height will tie to the month end. No width argument. And we click in to make sure it's correct. It's highlighting those six months, perfect. And then the last one is cumulative. Equals offset. Our reference cell is gonna be the first cumulative month. No row argument, no column argument. Height argument is six for now, no width argument. And then when we click, it's tracking the right cells. We're gonna close that and then we're gonna click into our chart and we're gonna select data and we're gonna remove the, the current variables and we're gonna add our flexible ones. So to do that, you click add Let's add renovated first. So we're gonna call it renovated units. And then we need to refer to our named range. To do that, you'd hit apostrophe, 
the sheet name, which is rental summary, apostrophe, exclamation point, and then renovated was the name of the range. Now we're going to add cumulative. Cumulative, cumulative units. To do that, we're gonna follow the exact same process as before. We're first gonna to refer to the sheet, which is apostrophe rental summary, apostrophe exclamation point, cumulative. And now we're going to add the months variable, which equals rental summary months. It's important to note if my tab did not have a space, so let's just say it was it was called summary and not reno space summary, you wouldn't need those apostrophes. I wanted to call that out because literally every single time that I make these dynamic ranges, I forget that. And it always takes a quick Google search to go figure out why I'm getting an error message. And it's because I have a space in my tab, which means I need to add the apostrophe. And now we added it, we can click OK. And now we just need to reformat this a little bit. So I'm going to click the chart design and let's go back to our old format. Let's change this chart type and we'll do a combo. And we're gonna do renovated units as the clustered column. And then we're gonna do the cumulative units on a secondary axis. So we have renovated units as the bars, cumulative, cumulative is the line. And now when we come back and we adjust our assumptions, so let's put it back to 11, the model updates automatically. It now counts out to month 11. All the bars are accurate, eight a month, and then the cumulative gets up to 88 by month 11. We could even do up to 100 months. It gets very crowded. However, if we extend that out, it is in fact accurate. This will now update as you're updating your renovation timeline. You'll never have to worry about doing manual updates again in the future. Let's look at one other example. So in this particular scenario, we're looking at a theoretical unit mix. There's 85 units and we want to track the various unit types and the average rents. But you can see there's a grid here where somebody using this model would manually type in the unit types, the unit count, the average square footage, and average rent. They could have anywhere from one unit type all the way up to 30 if they use the full grid. So what we need is a flexible chart that can capture anywhere from one to 30 entries. And we're pretty much gonna follow the exact same process that we did before, except we're gonna change our height argument slightly to be able to capture these manual entries. So let's get started. First, we need to do some named ranges. So what I wanna track here is unit type and average rent. I'm gonna formula, name manager, we're gonna create a new one, and let's just say type. It'll be an offset formula. Our reference cell will be the first unit listed in cell B3, row, argument blank, column argument blank, and now our height assumption is going to be a count A formula. Count A simply just counts the numbers of records that aren't blank in a single column. So I do count A, and then I'm gonna highlight all of the potential space in this data entry grid. I'm gonna close the bracket, and we'll leave the width argument blank, and then close the entire formula. And now when we click type, you can see it stops once the data entry stops. That's exactly what we want. We're gonna add another named range for rent. So rent equals offset. We're gonna reference the first data entry in the rent column, row argument blank, column argument blank, count A, highlight all the potential entries that could take place, close the bracket for count A, and then one more comma and leave the width arguments blank, and then close the offset formula, okay. Once we click into the reference bar, 
It's highlighting all the correct data. Now we need to create our chart. So I'm gonna to go to insert and do a stacked column. We're gonna select data and I'll add the dynamic variables. So the first one we're gonna do is type, unit type. Actually, I'm gonna change, before we do that, I'm just gonna change the tab name to mix, just to show you how the tab reference would change from our last example when there's not two words in the sheet name. Let's first add the rents. We'll click, so we'll type average rents mix. I don't need the apostrophe because the tab name, because the sheet name is only one word, and rent. And then on the horizontal axis, equals mix, our named range. For the unit types was type. Now we can add units and it should update automatically. If we do a four bedroom, two bath, and say there's two of those, the average square footage is 1500 and the average rent is 1650. The four bedroom, two bath appears at the end. This works the other way. Now we could also delete unit types and rents and the chart's going to update immediately. That wraps up the tutorial video on creating dynamic charts and graphs. You learned two slightly different methods, uh, specifically using the offset formula to ensure that your graphics would update as data in the model is changing. As a reminder, this is the second video of a two-part video series. Part one touches on the syntax and, and how you can use offset in your financial models. Obviously, this video just touched on graphics. So if you want a little more background into how this formula works and how it can be beneficial in your analysis, please click the link below and check out that YouTube video as well. If you've been enjoying Tactica's financial analysis content, I'd really appreciate if you give the video a like, you subscribe, and you allow us to notify you when we're releasing new content. I really appreciate you taking the time to follow along and we'll see you next time. Take care.